React has gone full asynchronous with a whole bunch of new tools built into the framework that make it easier than ever to do async the right way. We're gonna take a look at all of those in this video. We'll take a look at suspense, use, use transition, and now view transition in the most recent 19.2, and we're gonna do it all on top of Tanstack Start. Let's get right into it. So just to start off, I do wanna say that Tanstack Start is not required here. You can use this on anything. You can do this on Vite, you can do this on Next, you can do this on anything that's gonna support 19.2. I'm just using Tanstack Start because, well, I love Tanstack Start and it makes it really easy to do multiple routes. So this is the application that we're gonna play with. It's very simple. You just go to next image, next image, and it kind of shows async. You can see how slow it is. We've artificially put in a delay into the fetch. So right at the top here, we're defining our Tanstack start route. We are saying that SSR is false in this case. I'm just doing that because I want this to be more of a spa. All of this stuff is really about client work and loading data asynchronously off the client. So that's one of the really great things about Tanstack Start is you can just say SSR false, and now this particular route is not SSR. All right, here's that fetch image that I was talking about that has that delay built into it. In this case, all we're doing is just returning the ID of the image as well as a URL to that image and a title for that image so that we can display it. Now let's take a look at our app. Now our app does pretty much the classic old school style React data loading. You're gonna use an image ID to track the current image that we're looking at, and then we're gonna have image data that is then managed <laughs> by a use effect. That use effect is going to manage an is pending, so we know when we're loading data, and it's gonna do that fetch image, and then set that image data to the response. And then down in the JSX, we've got our button wrapper component as well as our image component if we're ready to show that image. And if we're not ready to show that image, then we have an image skeleton component that shows kind of that loading state. The button is a classic button wrapper that uses Tailwind to make us a nicely formatted button. The image just shows the title as well as the image. And the placeholder has pretty much exactly the same thing except with loading in gray. And that's it, the flow is really simple. You click on next image, that increments image ID, that triggers that use effect, which loads that data, and there you go. So this code looks like your code, but you're not yet ready to jump into the latest version of React and get access to all these awesome asynchronous tools. Let me show you one alternative that you have that makes this a whole lot better, and that's Tanstack Query. So let's take a look at the Tanstack Query implementation of this. So of course, all of this code is available to you in a link in the description right down below. If you wanna go check it out for yourself, the Tanstack query version of this page is in the Tanstack query file. And you can see it's really a whole lot simpler. So instead of using use state to manage image data and image pending, you're instead just calling use query. You're giving it a query key, which gives it a unique cache for each particular image ID. And then the function to call to go and get data, which in this case is fetch image and Beyond that, it is plug and play a replacement and it is a whole lot better than using use effect directly. All right, now that we've talked about the chance at query alternative, let's talk about how to use suspense and use, which are the foundation of React's approach to asynchronous work. So I'll bring in both of those. Suspense is a component and use is a hook. Now use allows us to extract data from a promise. So we're gonna start by managing this fetch image with a promise instead of with the data. So we're gonna have image data promise and set image data promise. And they're gonna manage a promise of image data. We no longer need any of this really. Instead, we're gonna initialize that use state with the fetch of the original image. And then down in our click, we're gonna add one to the image ID and then we're gonna fetch that image. Now down in the renderer is where we start to use suspense. So let's bring in suspense. So we'll bring in suspense and we'll say that when the image isn't ready, then we're gonna use the fallback of the image skeleton and then we're just gonna have image as a child inside of the suspense. Of course, right now it's looking for data, but we don't have that, we have a promise. So we're gonna say that we have the image data promise and we're gonna pass that in. And then down here in image, we're gonna say that we have now an image data promise, which is a promise. But how do we get access to the data in that promise? Well, that's where we call use. So we're going to use the image data promise. That's going to give us back image data. We'll just call it image in this case. And there we go. It's that easy. So let's go and bring up Arc again and we'll see. Does this actually work? And yeah, look at how clean that is. That is 
really impressive. No more use effect or anything like that. So let's talk about how and why this use and suspend system works. So I'm going to move button down so you can see more clearly the relationship between these two things. So we're talking about the relationship between suspense and use. So what's actually happening here is that image data promise is initially unfulfilled, right? It's still waiting around for data. And so when suspense tries to render image, image in turn uses the use hook to get data from that promise. And that use hook looks to see if that promise is fulfilled. And if that promise is not fulfilled, what it does is kind of weird. It actually throws that image data promise. And a lot of people freak out about that. They say, why is React using an exception as a way to do flow control? Well, there's a bunch of good reasons for that. One, that image can be nested down within a whole bunch of components. So what throw allows it to do is basically stop the execution at that point and say, whoa, there is a component in here that's not ready for prime time, doesn't have the data that it needs. So it's going to need to get rendered when that data is available. And the coolness of throwing a promise is that now you have a way to check when that data is available because that's the exact same promise that the component is waiting on. So when that promise unlocks, when suspense looks at that promise and sees that it's ready to go, then it knows that its children are ready to render, which is fantastic. If we didn't use throw promise, what we'd have to do in here is have some kind of conditionals around am I ready to go and then return some kind of like special symbol that says that we're not ready to go and then that would have to be handled at every layer of the component tree that comes back. It was just an entire mess. Throwing a promise actually makes a whole lot of sense when you look at it architecturally. All right, let's talk about another cool part of the system, which is transitions and action props. So let's take a look at the button. And I want that button to disable when it's loading. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to use action props instead of this standard on-click mechanism. So I'm going to change that to action. Now, action in this case is a blessed prop name. So as a something, something action, then React understands that this is going to be an action tied within a suspense-based system. So now to make this work, I need to bring in use transition. And then in the on-click, I use that start transition that we get back from use transition to start the transition that we're going to then watch with is pending. And I call that action to go and start that async transaction. And then I can simply use that is pending any way I want. I can take that and map it to disabled. And now if I go back over here, now when I click on next image, it disables until it's ready to go. Ah, how cool is that? All right, now to put the cherry on top of this asynchronous Sunday, let's go and look at view transition. Now view transition came in with 19.2 experimental. So you do need to be on the experimental branch. So down here you can see in my package JSON, I'm on React Experimental as well as React DOM Experimental. And great news about Tanstack Start is that it totally allows you to just go to the experimental branch. It doesn't actually maintain your copies of React like Next does. It, it's fantastic. So, okay. All right. So now let's bring in View Transition. Now I am going to get the red squigglies here. And it's not just because I'm not using it yet. It's because the React types that I'm loading doesn't actually know that view transitions exist, but it does. It's okay. And now we can start using these view transitions. For example, we can say here, we can say in the button case, when the button updates, do a little button pulse animation. And where's that button pulse animation? Well, it's over here. We're simply using the built-in browser view transitions mechanism to do pulsing on that button. And we also have some really cool transitions for fade in and fade out. So let's see how to use those. So in our image skeleton, we're going to use two different view transitions, one for the loading and then one for the image placeholder. Now, one thing we do need to do is make sure that we're always keyed when it comes to view transitions. That really helps with making sure that the browser understands exactly what we're doing. So I'm going to pass in the image ID and I'm going to use the same thing for image. And then over my image, I'm going to add the same view transitions and let's check it out see how it works and there you go a really nice smooth image transition it slides in look at how cool that is gpu accelerated view transitions all brought to you by react 19.2 and of course support in all modern browsers most recently firefox has added its support so nice to see 
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at how to do asynchronous work in React in 19.2 and how to make use of all these new asynchronous tools. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. In the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You can be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.